So let's get into uh, the practical areas of the presentation, of the webinar today. Let's talk about the reasons why you should limit your time on job boards to 20% or less. First of all, 80% of all jobs are never advertised. You've probably heard of the expression, uh, the hidden job market, and this is exactly what the hidden job market is. You will only find these positions, these 80%, if you're connected with somebody at the company, if you're a friend of a friend of the hiring manager, or if you have some connection to that company. And if you imagine, if, if all the jobs that you see out there are only 20%, it could be 30, it could be 10%, but uh, I think it's around 20%, then it's a really big part that is not advertised and they, that you can't see. And you're only able to, to tap into this hidden job market if you, if you follow the principles that are discussed in this uh, presentation today and also throughout my entire blog where you can uh, read many more details about this topic. Number two, the best jobs are never advertised. Um, it's a fact that the highest paid jobs and also the jobs with the, with the most interesting responsibilities, they're never advertised. If you imagine yourself being an employer and you're hiring for a position that is extremely important, would you hire somebody that you don't know or would you hire somebody that you know? I think it's... Uh, it's definitely, you definitely hire somebody that you know or a friend of a friend that you trust or where you have a, a mutual connection between the, the two of you. And number three, uh, most jobs demand uh, German or French that are advertised depending on where you're looking for. If you're looking for a job in Geneva, it's certainly going to be French. In Zurich, it's going to be German. If you look at all the jobs, it's probably 70 or 80% of the jobs that either are in German or French or require a very good or fluent level of the language. And this is mainly because when a hiring manager is, is, is trying to, to, to employ somebody, so they open a new position, they get a form from HR where, where they can tick some boxes. And some of these boxes say uh, language skills, so they can tick German or French as long as English, uh, uh, alongside with English, and they will get the form back to HR, and HR will probably not understand that, that this is just a, a nice to have. So they will publish the, uh, the job ad, either in German or French, or with the language requirements, and when you apply for this job as an English speaker, you will be rejected from HR, even though that the hiring manager might only uh, have ticked this box because it's a nice to have. So you only get through to the hiring manager there if you if you can if you have a way to get around HR or approach the hiring manager directly or uh, through a, through a connection. The number four work permit issue in Switzerland. This is a very big topic today. Uh, not today in the webinar, but uh, today in general. Uh, that uh, it's 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 quite tricky to get a work permit for people from outside of the of the EU. However, it's definitely not impossible. I know many cases of, uh, of, of people that I know who hired Indians, Chinese people, Russians, people from all over the world. And the main problem is when you, ad when you apply for an advertised job, HR many times doesn't know how to get the work permit for a non-EU citizen or what exactly they need to do. So they're scared that it's a lot of work or it costs a lot or they just have no idea what to do and therefore they will if they have the choice between uh, a non-EU citizen and a EU citizen they will they will reject the uh, the non-EU citizen before the EU citizen because it's uh, it's it's less it's less work for them so you have to understand this and you can you can overcome this this problem when you when you talk to people before you apply for a job and when you tap into the hidden job market. Um, there are a couple of stories um, that I could tell you. One is uh, when I was uh, still in rec recruitment, in corporate recruitment, um, I was looking for a, for a telco engineer uh, for a very specific job in, uh, in, a, in a multinational SME company. And I found somebody in China 
who just graduated as a PhD student in, 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 in the teleco environment. So the company hired him and they had to get a work permit. And basically he didn't, he didn't have any, any uh, work experience. So it was quite difficult to prove that uh, uh, difficult to prove in the in the in the work permit process to, that we actually needed this person because what you have to do in Switzerland as a company to get a work permit from somebody as a non-EU citizen is you have to prove that you couldn't find somebody in Switzerland and also a, within the entire European Union that has the same skill set. So basically, what we did is uh, we changed the job, uh, job title a little bit. Uh, of this person to a more specific one and we have the work permit organized within four weeks uh, for this uh, Chinese person so it's it's not impossible it's just a bit tricky and you need to know how it works many companies don't so they will reject you out of fear because they they don't know how to uh, uh, how to how to handle the whole process number five newly advertised jobs are old this is a very interesting one because when you see a job ad advertised on the first day it's not in 99 percent of the cases it's it has not been open today because in switzerland it's very common that companies advertise the, the the new jobs internally for around one to four weeks so when you see the job for the first time it's probably one to four weeks old and uh, definitely not current and at the same time, you are competing against internal, against internal employees already. And uh, therefore, you have, a, you have a competition, even if you are the first person to apply for the job. The number six, you have a lot of competition, of course. I just spoke to somebody, uh, I think it was two days ago. He's an, he's an aerospace engineer. And there are not so many positions, not so many people in Switzerland in this area. But... He actually confirmed that uh, when he applies for a job in Switzerland, there are hundreds uh, of people competing against him. So hundreds, hundreds of uh, other applicants competing against him, even in this uh, in this very specific uh, niche market. So you need to be you need to be able to to get in front of the hiring manager before they uh, publish the job somewhere on the job board. And number seven. Companies want to hire people who are not looking for a job. This might sound a bit weird, but I can confirm this from my entire recruitment career. Um, we were always uh, more successful with with uh, presenting candidates to a company that are still employed or that did not actively search for a job on the, and not actively apply for a job. So usually when companies are uh, or when, when agencies are looking for uh, for somebody they will they will search for these people on monster and on linkedin on expert uh, expertier etc and only when they don't find anybody they will advertise the position so therefore if you just uh, if you just apply for those positions you're not the first choice uh, you're also not the first choice of uh, of a company because they have an internal uh, talent pool that can that they can already go through and uh, and therefore you you come in not first but second so the conclusion of the whole thing is basically limit your uh, time on the job boards to 20% of your time and focus 80% of your time on what's next